Hi, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. So today we're going to look at um, five of my most visited birds to the woodland and the garden. And we're looking at all the tit family. Now I've managed to um, film all apart from the long tailed tit. Fortunately, two weeks ago I had uh, some photographs that I'd taken, and um, when I decided to do this vlog about these sp specific species, um, I didn't think I'd have a problem. So the long tail tit actually never turned up and I've been filming this over four days and I, it, the reason why it's taking me four days is because three of them I've been sat waiting for the long tail tit to arrive back it just doesn't arrive back I don't know why so for this purpose I've used some stills so I hope you enjoy them but I did have a new visitor come which was the willow tit I hadn't seen that till this last few days so that gives me five species of flute of tits which is absolutely fantastic so I hope you enjoy this um, it's took a long time to put together and sat out there and watching the, all these things happen it's just been amazing so let's get into it Brightly coloured inhabitant of woodland and forest habitats. Parks, gardens and hedgerows. Plumage is distinctive. With a blue cap, a white face with dark line through the eyes. Yellow on the parts smaller and more active than the great tit which often occurs alongside the blue tit but has a very different head pattern different calls often visits bird feeders and uses nest boxes listen for a variable high-pitched vocalization as well as harsh scolding calls You'll start seeing the blue tit more frequently towards the end of summer and in autumn through winter. The food source is a lot scarce. Insects and spiders aren't around too much in the colder months. So if you put out fat balls, peanuts and sunflower seeds, you will always attract them. They can't get enough of them. And if you can, a reflection pool. I love the way takes water Look at that. it just turns its head sideways and dips its beak in most birds just stick the beak all in and then lift the head up to uh, drink it down puts its head sideways and sips it up a little bit when you actually sit down and spend time with them um, like I do at the moment you're watching all the different breeds they all have different behaviours. The blue tit is a European bird. So you, you, you're lucky enough to be able to see it throughout all of Europe. All year round.
So I have to say that the blue tit is one of my favourites of the tit family. They're so cute. Constantly on the move. Very acrobatic. Who can't love them? The great tit is a conspicuous inhabitant of woods, forests, parks and gardens, and often visit birds feeders and also uses nets boxes. Its plumage is very distinctive, with white cheeks surrounded by a black cap and bib. The male has a broader black stripe down the belly than the female. The other parts are bright yellow. Also, the great tit's much larger and more boldly patterned than the blue tit, which you can often see them side by side but you need to listen to the call. It's a distinctive high-pitched up and down song and chattering scolds. There's quite a lot of different calls for the great tit. I've counted numerous. The great tit is very similar really to the blue tit as far as food goes. So if you want to attract them, you just put the fat balls out, peanuts out and sunflower seeds out and they can't get enough of them either. And with the insects and bugs getting a little bit scarce, now we're into autumn, obviously that'll run through till uh, winter, they need um, a little bit of help a little bit extra fat to keep warm and get them through the winter, just like the blue tits. So the great tits a European bird. So you'll see these throughout Europe all through the year. Just like the rest of them really um, they're all European birds that I'm showing on here today and they're all widespread throughout Europe <laughs> well the tree sparrow likes to bully them away constantly Next up, the cold tit. Small, and it's an active tit. Combination of large black bib with white bars and a broad white stripe on the nape, very distinctive. It inhabits coniferous and mixed woodland, forests, parks and gardens and that also visits bird feeders. It's associated with foothills and mountain areas throughout much of its eastern range. 
It often joins mixed species flocks in autumn and winter, moving quickly through the foliage and giving a high pitched call. Up and down, songs vary across the range. Feeding them seems a little different than the great tit and the blue tit. They only tend to take the sunflower seeds. I've not seen them on the fat bowls or the peanuts yet, um, but I may have just missed that. They're not quite as relaxed around with the other birds. They are that seem a little bit timid, even though they fly around with other flocks. Once they come, they do keep coming and they get more relaxed, so hopefully I'll see more of these. It's absolutely fantastic having all these different um, tits come down. I mean, at the minute I'm five different ones, so it's really great to have a woodland. I'm so lucky having the water out for them and the food. It's just going to attract more. I can't wait till winter and it gets cold and see what else can be attracted. The willow tit is an active little inhabitant of coniferous and mixed forests, birch woodland, willow and alder scrub. As you can see, it's got um, pale wing panels and it's got a slightly larger, messier type black bib than the coal tip and it has brighter buffy flanks. It does visit feeders um, but the ones that I've had in my woodland they only tend to nip into the sunflower seeds and it's literally in and out it's pinch one and fly off and eat it on a branch somewhere and also they do go on the ground and pick up the sunflower seeds that have fallen on the ground. So they're pretty much in and out really for the feed, but they do obviously tend to come to the water and enjoy that. Its call is more of a whistle and it gives various high pitch. It's a narrow vocal range, I suppose. go having a little dispute with the tree sparrow yeah it's normal long tail tit. What an adorable active little bird with a minute stubby bill. Distinctive 
tiny and fluffy with an attractive pinkish black and white plumage and a very long tail. Often travels in groups, at times joining with flocks of other tits and small woodland birds. It has a high-pitched fussy call. It inhabits wooded and forest habitats, parks, gardens, hedgerows and sometimes visits bird feeders. Well, on this occasion, it didn't visit my bird table. <laughs> I've been trying for four days. Fortunately, I got these pictures two weeks ago. So, unable to video this time, they just haven't turned up. Well, that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm not going to get into too much depth on uh, settings, but for this specific um, filming and photographing, I've used my Canon R6, I've used the RF 100 to 500 lens, and my EF 100 to 400 lens. Now, sometimes I got up well, two days I got up quite early um, to try and catch the long tail tits and the light was a bit terrible so using my 100 to 400 gives me a wide open aperture at 5.6 as the 100 to 500 only gives me 7.1 so first three hours in the morning I use my 100 to 400 so it just gives me that little bit of extra light and then when the sun rises a bit higher then I'll just change over to my 500mm lens for both photography and the video work um, and that's pretty much it ISO um, it probably ranged from I don't know 640 sometimes 320 but up to 8000 on some of the photos so that was quite challenging uh, I decided to use Aperture Priority, not really used it before, but I've started using it recently and I actually quite enjoy it. I've just found out how to set the um, shutter speed to a minimum because it was coming out at 125 and I thought that's a bit slow, even though it gave him a bit more light, but I'm trying to shoot at like f9 so I can get not just the bird's face and eye in focus but the whole of the body, so I've been using f9. But obviously it reduced the um, shutter speed but I've only just found out that I can actually change that which I have and using a minimum shutter speed now of 500 uh, only for the small birds it's just obviously the, that buzzy and that moving all the time it's, it becomes quite difficult so that's pretty much it for the settings nothing special just uh, having a play around and see what works best and the results are here
thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.